2007 Ford Expedition rear brake pads and rotor machine. I'm Brian Esser from How To Automotive and I'm going to walk you through that process. You're going to start by getting your vehicle up in the air. If you're doing this in the at home, use floor jacks and jack stands and get the back, get back of the car up and go ahead and remove the rear wheels. You'll need to pop these little caps off. I'm just kind of putting like a little screwdriver in there and kind of giving them a twist to get to the lug nuts. So on this vehicle, the outer pad had just went metal to metal and the inner pad wasn't far behind. So uh, we need to mic these rotors really well to make sure that they're still thick enough to machine. It just barely nipped so it. To do that, you need to take these little plastic caps off that were right here to pop those off. Then you'll need a seven millimeter Allen. You take the, uh, the pins out, so you'll unscrew those. And uh, what I like to do is like, from the back side, if, you, uh, if they're not coming out, you can push your fingers in there and push the pins out. So once you get those out, pull your caliper off, you can go ahead and set that up, up on the suspension. So you're gonna need a caliper mic like this to measure the, uh, the thickness of the rotor. So you're gonna measure the thickness, and, you, and it, especially since it's gone metal to metal, you're gonna do this in uh, quite a few spots and try to find the absolute lowest spot to determine if you can machine this out. This, this particular case, it just barely touched yesterday to start it, so he hasn't really driven it very much, and it's, the grooves are not very deep. It looks worse than it is, but it's not that bad, actually. So, now after we got the, our measurement, we need, to look, uh, we need to look it up in the uh, specs in a book or on the computer or whatever. Sometimes they're stamped on the rotor itself and um, determine if it's thick enough. So I'm using my brakes. Uh, it's, a, it's called Bendex. Um, book and it's just a book that gives you the specs for ro uh, rotors and drums so I looked it up for a 2007 e expedition and the um, rear the rear minimum is uh, 0.748 and our measurement uh, 0.847 so we got almost a hundred thousandths there to, uh, to mess with so that's, that's really thick so we're, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and machine the rotors. If yours are close, or or if you feel like it has too big of a grooves or hot spots or anything in the rotor, I recommend you replacing the rotor. So now to get the rotor off, you want to make sure you have the emergency brake off, and it should just slide off like this. And now you can take your rotor over to the brake lathe and, and check it up. So if you guys are doing this at home, and you don't have access to a brake lathe. What you do is you take the rotors down to your local repair shop and um, tell them what year make model the rotors come from and they can measure them out for you if you don't have the mic and then you can uh, have ask them to machine the rotors for you if they're in spec and they'll, they'll charge you a little fee and uh, maybe a half hour later they come back and you pick the rotors up and then you can put them on the car so while the uh, brake rotors are uh, turning we're going to do a little prep work for the brakes so uh, I'm going to inspect my my park brake shoes make sure that they weren't left on and barbecued and make sure they're in good shape which they are and then i'm going to check these little slides right here where the brake pads themselves are ride you want to use a little wire brush and kind of clean these up and then um, you want to make sure there's no large divots in here and if there is um, you may lightly file them if they're too bad then you actually may have to replace this bracket itself but living here in Southern California, I rarely see any of those type of issues. Uh, you only, I usually see those on cars that come back east from, you know, anywhere there's snow and stuff like that. But this one's in really good shape. So now we're gonna prep our pads, or caliper. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these pins completely out. Just slide them out, and we're gonna lube these up and put them back in in a little bit. But right now I'm gonna put a flat blade screwdriver in here and pop the, the um, outer pad out first. Okay, now that you got the uh, the inner pad off or outer pad off, um, we need to uh, inspect our boot here and make sure there's no uh, rips or tears in the piston. And you also want to make sure that there's no fluid leaking out of the piston. And that, that if that checks out all uh, fine, now what we need to do is we need to get this piston pushed back into the bore of the caliper. And before we do that, what I like to do is lower the vehicle down and take it like a little turkey baster. Or like one of those little things that you uh, use to suck uh, the boogers out of like a little kid's nose or whatever. And suck a little bit, a couple ounces of brake fluid out of the massive cylinder, suck them out. 
And then, um, and also when you do that, you can also check the condition of the brake fluid and make sure it's in good condition if it needs to be flushed or whatever. So remove a couple ounces from that. The reason why is I'm, we're gonna uh, press this piston back in, but we're not gonna open the bleeder screw here. And what that does is it pushes the brake fluid back up the line and back into the master cylinder. And if it's over full, it will spill out into the engine bay or possibly damage the master cylinder or cap. So you wanna remove a few ounces. Okay, to, to, to press the piston back in, I'm gonna use a C-clamp like this. They, they do make uh, tools that you can use, that like, they look like caulking guns, that thing, and they push the pistons in. But a good old C-clamp works just fine. And when you turn these in, you wanna make sure that when you turn it, it's, it's pretty effort. So uh, you don't want, uh, if, it's, if you're cranking on it really hard and it's hard, then that, that would mean like possibly there's something wrong with the piston, you know, the caliper is, is kind of sticking or the, or it's cocking in the, in the in the bore like so and also I've also seen it like where the actual brake line itself will actually make it really hard for the and if that's the case then then there's a problem in your brake system but it should turn in freely like this okay now you can go ahead and pop your brake cat uh, old brake pad out of the piston here okay so now we need to do a little prep work on the uh, new pads themselves and what, what I like to do, what I found over the years, is by adding a little bit of this seal glide uh, um, brake caliper grease, thin layer of it, and you take just a thin layer and apply it to the back of the uh, pad on the shim. It helps reduce uh, squeaking and uh, vibration. So I like to put a little thin layer on it. And also, I wanted to, you also want to obviously match up your old, uh, your old pads with the new pads, make sure they're the right stuff. So after you determine that, go ahead and put a little grease on the pads. I like wanted this. to say, be careful not to get the grease on the front side. If you do that, that's been known to actually cause squeaks. So try not to get any fingerprints or grease on it. And if you do, use a brake clean or a little bit of sandpaper or whatever to, to get it off. So now that your brake pads are, are prepped, um, we're gonna go ahead and install the rotor back on and we're gonna check the park brake adjustment. So what you want to do is you want to slide your rotor over and as you can see how loose this is, that, that indicates that the uh, park brake is out of adjustment. And you also want to keep it in neutral so you can spin it and you can, uh, so what you want to feel is like a light little drag on those shoe, or those, you know, the shoes on the inside here. You don't want them super tight, just a light little drag. So if, uh, if yours is loose like this one are, what you're going to do is pull the rotor back off and on the bottom of the brake shoes here, there's a little adjustment wheel. You can adjust that to where the where the brake pads go out. So you'll adjust it a couple clicks, one or two clicks, slide your rotor back on and, and, and feel that the, you wanna do small in, increments at a time and, until it gets a snug little fit. Now that you got the park brake adjusted the way you like, now we need to put our, our um, new brake pads in the caliper. And the one with the larger clip is the, the one that goes into the piston. So you gotta kind of put it in, line it up and use your thumbs and kind of just press it in with your fingers. Then you'll put the outer pad on here, and then you'll kind of, with one hand on each side of the uh, brake pad, you'll squeeze them in and pop them into place. Next, you're going to take a little bit of this brake caliper grease and put a little bit on these pins that you took out, out of here. So you're going to, and then you're going to put them back in here and kind of work them back and forth in here until the grease is evenly distributed inside the rubber bushing here. So you'll, you'll put some on there and you'll slide it back and forth, and you'll do both you know, top and bottom pins. So after your pins are lubed up, now you can take the brake caliper itself and slide it over your, your rotor here. And you also want, on, the, on this one's here, the, this little ear will go underneath the tab, like so. And then it'll, it'll rotate around. Now you can put your, uh, tighten up these pins, the seven uh, millimeter Allens, top and bottom, tighten those up. Also, when you put these calipers back on, you want to make sure that you don't twist the brake lines. So they should look nice and uh, just like that without, a, without any twist in it at all. Once you get the, the pins bolted back up, the calipers all bolted back up, now you can go ahead and put these little plastic caps back on. And that keeps the dirt from getting inside those pins and keeps, keeps everything moving freely. So go ahead and put those back on. Now you can go ahead and bolt your wheel back on, torque it down. and. Uh, after that, you can lower the vehicle down, and um, the most important step is to pump the brake pedal. And you're going to pump the brake pedal until all the fluid goes back into the calipers. 
and you should have a nice firm brake pedal. If you don't have a nice firm brake pedal, you've somehow got air in the system and you'll have to bleed the system and you'll bleed the, uh, you know, the right rear first, left rear. I recommend if you've got air in it, just bleed all four wheels. And then, um, but most likely you're not gonna have to do that. I've never actually had to do it after pressing the piston in without opening the bleeder screw. And uh, just remind you to double check your fluid level in the master cylinder after you're done. And that completes rear brakes on a 2007 Ford Expedition. I'm Brian Essex from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you for watching my videos and uh, remind you to subscribe for more valuable videos like this. Thank you again.